in this week's episode, we're going to be taking three dark and moody photographs and changing them from good to even better. And I'm going to show you how using Lightroom. And then at the end, we'll decide which one we like the best. Whether you're experienced in Lightroom or not, I'm going to take you step by step through the process and discuss also the pluses and minuses of the photograph. And in that way, hopefully inspire you to take your own dark moody photographs. These are my photos, but if you'd like to submit your own for me to critique, DM me in my Instagram. There's a link in the description below. Our first picture is this warehouse scene. Really moody, dark, mysterious. I love the shadowy silhouettes of those boxes and the windows. Like, it's a real question of what do they make there? You know, and the truck on that right really adds the story. Maybe they're doing some secret loading in the middle of the night. You know, some spy movie, who knows, something like that. So it's got a very interesting vibe going on here. And it's very intriguing. Uh, I like it. It's a good image to start with. This next one is uh, a hotel interior scene where we have the main light source coming from the outside, which are creating these long cast shadows, giving really spooky, deserted feel. And also, you notice it's shot from a, a low angle, so that makes the objects appear unusually large and a little bit distorted and adds this eerie feel of this scene. Our last picture that we'll be looking at in, re in editing is this reflective shot um, in this hotel. And I honestly, I love doing reflective photography where we're merging what's in front of the camera with what's behind the camera. It really engages the viewer to look at the scene and understand how the overlaying of the foreground and background put, come together and how each element plays a part in it. This picture in particular, to me, is sort of like a, the, the merging of nature with man-made objects. So we have all the trees, we have the, the foliage here, and these organic leaves combined with the geometric shapes in the windows and the building surfaces and on these chairs. So, like, to me, this is a statement about man's striving and constant struggle to impose order on the, the chaotic world. And uh, it, it's, it says a lot to me. I really like it. So we're going to edit these pictures. So starting at the beginning, we have our warehouse scene. What can we do here? So you'll notice that on the far left edge, it tilts in a little bit. And that's um, the barreling effect of taking a wide angle shot that the picture here, the angle, the, the lines are a little bit to angle to the left over here. And as we move to the right, you notice that they're actually converging on the right side like this. So because of the angle of the shot, it's creating this, um, this converging effect. I'd like to straighten it out a little bit so we can go into the adjustments here, crop and straighten and hit auto. And I think it's a little bit better now that even though now it, it's it's more angle on this side, but this, the street is a little bit straighter, right? You know, before it's angled up like this, uh, a little bit more level. Let's go now into the section where we adjust the tone. If we went through and ask Lightroom to do its auto settings for us, and control U is the shortcut. So we'll see that it doesn't really get it right because it's exposing for what it thinks is a normal picture, but this is really a dark and moody picture. So it's going to bring up the colors a lot more than we need, and we don't really want that. So we're going to do it manually. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit to give it a little bit more drama. And highlights, I like to lower just a touch. You can see we bring a little bit more back into the windows, right? So before the windows are a little bit more blown out, here's giving a little more depth and quality to the windows. Shadows, I'm going to bring up just a little bit. Whites, usually I don't touch it so much, but we'll just add a little there. And then blacks will bring down, and that's going to add in a little bit more contrast. Okay, so we can see the before and after. This is before. Undo it like this. So that's before and after, right? So we see as we've added a little bit more in here. I want to pull down, this looks a little bit, the saturation on our buildings is a little bit too yellowy for me. And that's probably because of the lights. It's getting the light from the, the, the street lamps, which are a little bit more yellow. So we're going to bring that down, but not using saturation. I'm going to pull it down using the vibrance. Saturation pulls down everything 
or increases or decreases the saturation of the colors equally, and vibrance does it that the colors are more saturated or affected more. So if I pull down the vibrance, it's going to affect these, the colors of the building much more than like the color of this truck. So let's go see that. If I pull it down, see it's it's fat, it's changing faster the colors of the building. So I'm going to bring it down to around here, and I think that's really good. In in a the tone curve, I'm going to make a little of an S curve to add a little bit more punch. So I'll bring up the lighter area just a bit and pull this down a bit, and I can turn the tone curve on and off. You can see it's very subtle, but all these changes, they add up, right? So this is before and this is after. Okay, I'll bring down, I think I'll bring down the vibrance just a little bit more now. Here we are. Okay, and then one other thing that I've enjoyed playing with a little bit is in the color grading area. I'm not going to change the color itself, but here I can target the luminosity of the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So here I'm going to pull down the shadow luminosity and bring it just a little bit down here like this. All right, and we see before after with that. So, so we see the before and the after, right? So I think this is a, a has a lot. I think this picture is moody, but I think we've made it a, a lot more intriguing and, and nice this way. So I, I'm very happy with this. Let's see what our next picture. This picture, as we said before, is uh, the, our hotel interior. And first, it's not exactly straight. As you can see, the lines here, everything here is tilted to the right. So we're going to adjust that. We can use our lines to adjust it so that's that's okay first and foremost we're fixing the the orientation of the picture however one thing also that bothers me a lot um, is that you see this is taken is very it's very grainy here this areas and we'll see if we can uh, fix it a little bit and besides that also I'm not such a fan of this exit sign this exit sign is very um, the green stands out a lot and it, it draws the eye too much for me so I want to reduce that so let's start off by by working with our contrast bring it up a little bit and reducing our highlights again if I were to do this the automatic way it would be way too bright again so we're not even gonna try right uh, shadows I'm bring the shadows down and our blacks down and everything here is trying to minimize the noise that's going over here I'm also going to increase the clarity to the touch and dehaze. Okay, I don't need to change anything in vibrance or saturation. Here, I think I'm going to pull down the shadows a little bit more. And then in the detail section, we can uh, reduce the noise by going to our luminosity slider and moving that up. How's that? I think it helps a little bit. And then we're also going into our color grading and pull down the shadows here. Let's pull it down a lot. So you see that? Wow, well, that's pretty cool. But I don't want to go so extreme. One trick I learned for doing adjustments is you pull it down until it's obvious to you and then come back in a little bit. So if it was like this is, is really intense and it looks decent, so now you can actually pull back and, and re not go as strong, and it'll still have a similar effect without being uh, overpowering. So I have here. So it's the original on this. All right now, one thing also, I think in the shadow area, I can actually go here and make it a little bit more blue. So we'll take this and remove it just a little bit. I see the before and after of that one. Right, just to make it a little blue. So here we have before and or after. Oh, yes. And so now what we also want to do, though, was we want to fix this exit sign. So for doing that, we're going to do a local edit. I don't see the shortcut here, but if you go to Tools and then Create a Mask, we'll make a Brush Mask, which is the shortcut K. So over here, 
So I'm just going to go here and reduce the size a little bit by pressing the left, the left bracket symbol, and then click over here and brush it on. If I press O, we'll see the overlay and you can see what's being affected. And now we're going to go to saturation and desaturate a little bit. So we're just going to pull it back down here. It looks very good. So now it's at minus 40, so I'll maybe bring up just a touch. All right, so now minus 33 or 32, and it's the same decent effect. So, so I'll hit K again to lock that in. And one more time. Okay, we see the before and after, right? So it's a little bit more subtle. And that's what I think is a nice picture here, a version of this. So here's before and after, right? So let's go look at our last picture, this reflection, which, what's the problem here? The color balance is way off. So let's go and ask Lightroom to do that for us, which, which auto white balance is control shift U. And that makes it, I think, much better. So it's before and after. So besides the color, one thing that is uh, something that we need to fix after we've touched up and gotten to a basic level we want to be is this area right here. This, I'm not sure what that is, but it definitely detracts. So we're going to bring that to Photoshop afterwards to fix it because Lightroom, while it does have some really amazing tools for removal, it's not going to be able, I don't think it's going to handle this. So we'll see what we could do with Photoshop afterwards. But let's get started with our, the general tone of our photo. So here, let's see if I do the autumn one. If I try auto control U, again, too bright. It doesn't understand what we're trying to do here. So let us, we'll make the exposure just slightly higher, just a touch. That's a little too much here. And contrast also up. And it's looking good at 37, but I won't bring it down because that's maybe a little too extreme. We can get away with the same type of impact with not as high contrast, with a little bit, with a little less contrast. Highlights we're going to bring down. Let's, okay, like this. Shadows, bring it up just a little bit. Whites up a little bit, and then our blacks, we're gonna bring that down, and it's gonna add a lot of, adds to the effect of the contrast. I think that's a little bit too much for me, so let's go back up. Because I'm trying to show the, the intermingling of the nature and man-made objects. So I want them to look like they're superimposed one on the other one. Let's increase texture just a little bit. They'll bring up maybe the chairs and, and the objects here. And I think if we go down here, we can also add in our S-curve to increase, bring up the lights a little bit. And the shadows just deepen just a touch. Right. And... The only thing here is maybe I want to take out from our mid-tones, remove the yellow a little bit by using its complementary color, which is blue. So if I do that, you see that? Let's go before and after. See, that's, it's looking this area here, how it's orangey, and I, I adjust it, and it pulls out just enough, right? So it makes it uh, a little bit more um, neutral color. Okay, so all that is really good. Um, so now what we're going to do is take this picture into Photoshop to do this last correction. Here we are in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is first, for safety, just make a duplicate copy. Control J makes a new copy of it, right, just on top. And over here, we're going to um, take our healing brush, make our brush larger. Okay and paint onto here and see what it does. Wow, I have to say that is phenomenal. Let's do the before and after on that. Before and after. Wow, even puts in this nice little reflection here right on the floor that is really phenomenal photoshop is amazing okay so now that we have this picture so we'll go export it we'll save this one uh, and then we can compare our three pictures and see which we like more so comparing the pictures we have our warehouse 
the hotel interior, and this reflective scene. Which, which of these would I think is my favorite picture of these three? So the first one, we said before, has a very interesting story behind it, right? We have this warehouse, we have the, the truck, and the, store, and the question about what's going on here. And it's very cool. This one, with the hotel interior, is also very moody and dark, and a little mysterious. It could be almost like someone's hiding out here or something, you know, behind one of these walls. And here we have the story about man striving to overcome nature. So I think between the three of them, I think the strongest picture for me actually is this first one with the White House. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this photo critique, then check out my book, Composition Techniques to Create Compelling Photos. Chock full of examples and practical exercises, you'll learn how you can take your photography from good to great. It's available both as a paperback and digital download on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description below. Thanks again so much for watching, and I look forward to reading your comments and seeing you in another video.